Exodus chapter 23, verse 25, 26, probably 27. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee, there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Speaking very quickly on the subject, the covenant of service. This is part two. The covenant of service. Our objective is to understand, first of all, what kingdom service is all about. And then to understand the dimensions of kingdom service. Then to understand keys to acceptable and profitable service. And then the profit of service. What is kingdom service all about? What dimensions are there to kingdom service? If my service to God is to be acceptable, how do I, should I serve? And what is the profit of kingdom service? In the first service, by way of introduction, we identified the fact that two basic actions confirm a person's dedication to God. When we say someone is dedicated to God, there are two things. Luke chapter 4 verse 8 said, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So, to confirm that a person is dedicated to God, number one, worship, number two, service. Every dedicated child of God is a committed worshiper of God. And every dedicated child of God is a committed servant of God. It is not possible for a person to claim to be dedicated to God and is not committed to worship. It is not possible also for a person to claim to be dedicated to God and is not committed to service. Listen to this. We are not primarily on the earth to worship money. We are on the earth to worship our maker. We are not primarily on the earth to serve self. We are on the earth, in the earth, to serve the creator. I said in the first service, it amounted to a waste of life in time and eternity. If we fail to worship and serve God with our one life. I want to know you more. Lord, I want to see your face. Lord, I want to do your will. Lord, I want to live for you. I have just 
one life to live, and it must glorify you. I am yours, O Lord, in time, and for all eternity. Lord, I want to know you more. Lord, I want to see your face. Somebody used this just this one life to serve himself to worship material things. We established that. Secondly, we said service to God is a walk of covenant. Service is not just an action. Because we are, we are anchoring our service this morning as one of those two factors for dedication. Service is not just a mere action. It's a covenant walk. It's a covenant walk. It's a covenant, a walk of covenant. You shall serve the Lord and he shall bless. Covenant means where a man is duty bound to serve his creator, the creator is duty bound to respond to the service. This is what it means. I said in the first service, God cannot serve himself. A man cannot bless himself. So God requires service from man as man requires blessing from God. The meaning is, if you don't struggle to serve God, God cannot struggle to bless you. I donated my life to God from my youth. And every witch in hell knows that this little boy is blessed. Not, not, not talking of when you talk of blessings. Some people think of money. That blessing is far beyond money. Being able to sleep at peace at night without no worry of any devil under heaven. It's being loaded with deposits from heaven that money can't buy. You shall serve the Lord and he shall bless. If So it's a covenant wall. It's not just an attempt to assist church. Serving God is not just an attempt to assist God. It's a walk of covenant. It's a game of exchange. Somebody say amen. There are people who are foreverly begging God to bless them. Begging God for one thing or the other and they are not responsible in any way to anything that bothers God. It doesn't work like that. It's a covenant. When your part is played, his role is not in doubt. When your commitment is confirmed, his commitment is guaranteed. Question is, what is kingdom service? In the first service we said it involves running the errands of God. Errands of the, sorry, it involves service involves waiting on the master for instructions for commands. We, 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 we dealt with that in the first service. We also said the service involved running the errands of the master. First of all, we talked about 
waiting on the instructions and the commands of the master. I am, I am on standby for whatever you want to say, whatever you want to do, here am I. And then we said also that it involves, run, it involves running the errands of the master. Here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. As the Lord needs somebody. Here am I, send me. I will go, send me. I will go, send me. As the Lord needs somebody, I will go. instrument for use use me Lord use me Lord Lord make me a practical instrument for you use me use me use me use me Lord Lord make me a practical Instrument for you. That is service number two. Number three, which is what we are dealing with in this service. Service involves identifying and meeting the needs of the master. You looked around, you identified that this is needed identifying and meeting the needs of the master. Like the Shunammite woman identified the need in the life of the prophet Elisha. In 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 8. I perceive that this man that passed by us daily is a holy man of God. Let's build him a house. That was done for an earthly man. Now you are perceiving a need in the house. Or in the kingdom, an assignment, something inside the house. Identifying. And meeting the needs of the master. There are people who sit in church. There are people who, 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 who attend church programs and claim that they are church people and Christians and so on for donkeys. And they see nothing to do. Nothing. Identifying. Meeting the needs of the master. Number three, number four, service involves making a difference in the world of the master. Making a difference. Again, Second Kings chapter four, verse eight to nine, we saw how Elisha made a difference in the world. Sorry, how the Shunammite woman made a difference in the world of the master. If you are a genuine servant of God, not talking of being a pastor, you belong to a church, a ministry, your presence will be felt. Your absence will be noticed. Because you, 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 you make a difference. You don't exist in indifference. Because you realize that if your presence is not felt, your absence can never be noticed. And if your presence is not felt, and your absence is not noticed, then your presence was never needed. Hallelujah. Making a difference. And I challenge somebody here today. Identify in the world of our master. In his assignment and his kingdom something that needs to be done and hit the road doing identify make a difference now what are the dimensions of service that exist number one 
is service with one's ability and capability. What you are able to do, what you are capable of doing. First Peter chapter 4 verse 11. First Peter chapter 4 verse 11. He said, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man's minister, the word minister is the same word servant or serve. If any man serve, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Minister to God. Do the work of God with the ability you carry. Your, the fullness of your ability and capability. And I identified three of them in the first service. Physical ability. That's physical energy mental ability that is your wisdom your ideas your creativity and spiritual ability the giftings you can ability that is there is nothing i know how to do that god will beg me to do for him nothing that is there is nothing i know how to do that god will beg me to do for him nothing <laughs> and there is no ability I carry that will only be used for the making of money none the daily, daily devotional seed of destiny has been in, in writing I don't know for how many years now far beyond the decade I don't know where one naira of it goes. I don't know where it goes. I don't know. Doesn't doesn't branch near me. If one evangelistic agenda or the other, seeds or CDs, DVDs, MP3s. I don't know the address of one naira out of it. There is nothing I know to do that God will have to beg me to do. Nothing. So we serve God with our ability, with our energy, with our resources. We serve God with our capability. The second dimension is service with one's resources. Serving God with your resources. Listen to the testimony of David in first chronicles chapter 29 verse 1 to 5 furthermore David the king said unto all the congregation Solomon my son whom alone God has chosen is yet young and tender and the work is great for the palace is not for man but for the Lord God now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for the things to be made of gold the silver for the things of silver the brass for the things of brass the iron for things of iron wood for things of wood onyx stones and stones to be set glistering stones and of diverse colors and all manner of precious stones marble stones in abundance that is so that is david moreover because i have set my affection to the house of my god I have of mine own proper good of gold and silver that is my substance which I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house even 3,000 talents of gold of the gold of offer and 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the houses without the gold for the things of gold silver for the things of silver and for all manner of work to be made by the hands of artificers. Who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? This massiveness of giving, David called it service. You serve God with your resources. You, you see, the truth of the matter is, 
No, now I am full-time pastor. I trained as a medical doctor. I am full-time pastor. I am preaching fully for the gospel. At my time belongs to God. I mean, by 1 a.m. last night, I was still making calls, distress call and answering call for, I mean, praying for people. And I'm to, to be up early enough to be in the service for 6 a.m. So my life and my time belongs to God. Now, that does not excuse me from releasing my resources. Huh? I, I, I can't say I'm already serving God enough, so... I, no, 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 no. No. The, the, my, my, the money that enters my hand follows in the service. My time is in the service. My talent is in the service. My resources is inside the service. I have never raised an offering in this church and I was not involved in the giving. It can happen. If we said in those days, how many people can give one million and above? It means I am inside. I will never call a figure that I can't give at the highest level. I mean, I, I, I will call a figure that I'm expecting somebody else to, to, to give and I'm watching. You know what I told the pastors in pastors conference one day? I told them, I said, pastors, if anybody in, your, in the church you are pastoring is giving more offering to God, maybe by way of percentage, by way of volume and frequency, more than you, the pastor, hand over the church to that person. <laughs> People look at each other. What are, what are you talking about? That is a member of the church is more interested in the vision that you claim that God gave you. That is the man is more committed and more sacrificial than you who call yourself a pastor. Hand over the church to that person. That is a pastor. <laughs> Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. No, sir. Somebody say give and he's not giving. Pay your tithe. And he has never tithed since he was created. And he's a pastor. He has never tightened. Everything about him is tight. Everybody should tight. He doesn't tight. He's Melchizedek. <laughs> Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Anywhere you find that the pastor himself doesn't tight, you are wasting your money. That is under an open heaven. A closed heaven. He doesn't give. He asks you to give. Hallelujah. Say, so all of you bring out your offering and his own hand is, is empty. Everybody should lift up empty hand too. Bring out your offering. Bring out your, lift your, all of you bring out your offering and his own hand. Father, bless all this offering. Where is your own pastor? Hallelujah. Very, very important. We serve God with our ability. We serve God with our resources. Let's rush very quickly. What makes service acceptable and profitable? What is profitable and acceptable service? Number one, service must be done heartily and lovingly. We dealt with that in the first service. We dealt with four points because of time. I'm going to rush through heartily loving that is from the heart from the heart with love for god second we said that service must be done willingly not that somebody put you under pressure okay not that based on the preaching let's let's just try willingly the scriptures are there we dealt with that in the first service thirdly we said that service must be done joyfully not mournfully. Not that you are angry, you are frowning at the point of your duty as traffic control officer or usher or choir or council or something. No. If it's not done joyfully, it should be left totally. That was the third thing we saw in the, in the last service. Number four, we said that service must be done fervently and passionately. If you are going to see the reward, 
Not that somebody say, I have been serving God all these years and, 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 and I have not seen any result. Follow this checklist. Check it, check it. Are you serving fervently? Are you serving passionately? We dealt with those four in the first service. Now let's go to number five. Service must be done in sincerity and truth. Sincerity and truth. It must be done in sincerity. You must be sincere. No ulterior motives. In Joshua chapter 24 and in verse 14, scripture speaking, he said, Now therefore, he said, Fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the floor. Not church on Sunday, Habalist on Monday. In sincerity, in truth. First Samuel chapter 12 and in verse 24 also talk about the sincerity with which you are to do the service. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. Serve in truth. Don't be fake. Be real. Be genuine. Be authentic. Be sincere. That was number five. Number six. Service must be done in humility. Humility. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 18, Paul the Apostle speaks about and when they were come to him, he said unto them, you know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, verse 19, serving the Lord with all humility of mind. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind, not with a braggadociousness, not with an arrogance, peacockish kind of mentality. Humility. Don't talk to me like that. Is it because I'm here doing traffic control? If you meet me in the office, can you talk to me like this? You wasted plus one, minus one, zero. You wasted your service. Because somebody answered you, are the, I'm talking about the traffic control officer. You are talking, talking to me like this. Is it because we are in the same church? Because we are in the same department? If that is the attitude we carry, there is no need to serve at all. Remain with your bigness. And if you are a head of department, you serve with humility as well. Not as a boss, not as a lord. Not as a boss, not as a lord. So that God does not put you in a box like Nebuchadnezzar. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? You see what, God, what, what Peter spoke to elders in the church and leaders. First Peter chapter 5 verse 2 to 3. First Peter chapter 5 verse 2 to 3 and then verse 5. He said, feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. Okay, let's start from verse 1. The elders which are among you, that's, it, this includes leaders, elders, heads of departments, coordinators, home cell leaders, everyone, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. Not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy look about, of a ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's heritage. But being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humility, simplicity, sincerity, Integrity is a, a major secret of destiny. One pastor came to me the other day <laughs> with say I'm um, uh, so and so and so he's giving me a lot of description of so and so and so and so and so and so, and so how big he is and so on. He said, well, well, I can see that God has helped you and you have done very, very big things. If you want to give me an advice, what do you want to give me? I say, humility, humility. Humility. My, my advice started from his utterance. 
<laughs> humility. Humble yourself. If you want to go far, humble yourself. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. The lion of the tribe of Judah was the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. You need the humility of the lamb. As I was talking, he said, so can we see later? I said, no, let me finish what I'm saying. <laughs> let me finish what I'm saying. The lion of the tribe of Judah is also the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. You need the humility of the lamb to sustain the authority of the lion. It's, the, it's one, it's the same. This is very, very, this is why, now, many people say, I've been following God for years. I've been serving God, doing my best. Look at the, look at, look at this checklist. Service must be done with humility. Number, number seven, service must be done in uprightness and godly fear. Uprightness and godly fear. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 to 29, he said, wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear why for our god is a consuming fire uprightness godly fear psalm 101 verse 6 psalm 101 verse 6 see my eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he is the one that shall serve me. He that walketh in a perfect way, Psalm 101 verse 6, he that walketh in a perfect way, that is the one that shall serve me. Verse 7 now, what's in the matter? He that walketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies cannot tarry in my sight. Can't be a deceiver, a cheat, a 419, and then you are there. Even cheating people inside church. And then you are there. See, I'm, 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 a, I'm a worker. Dedicated, committed worker. No. That service is useless. It's unprofitable. Service must be done in uprightness. Number eight, service must be devoid of eye service and men pleasing. Devoid of eye service and men pleasing. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 7. Ephesians chapter 6 and in verse 7. He said, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Do service as to the Lord, not to men. Ephesians 6, 7. Do service to the Lord, not to men. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 to 24. He said, Servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, not unto men. Some people are working for their pastor in the church. Some people are serving their heads of department. Some people are serving one person or the other. You know how? That is why they, 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 they jack up when the person is coming. It's like laborers on site. Doing their own thing and waste whiling away time until supervisor is coming. Then everybody begins to miss concrete. Until, until, until project manager is coming. Some people are doing like that. There are people who will never behave well without supervision. You see, God, the, the, the kind of service that God is requiring from you is that you don't require human follow-up. You don't need anybody's eye to be on you to do well. Am I communicating? That is, God can rely on you and he doesn't sleep. Otherwise, I could have said he will go to sleep because you are there. If you do things because of what a man will say thank you for, you, you receive your reward. I've seen people take a prophet's offering or take a seed. And I say, God bless you. That's the highest. I can't say thank you. If I say thank you, you lose your reward. Let God thank you. 
I don't want people to say thank you to me. Let God thank me. Somebody say a loud amen. That is criteria for service. Number nine, I will deal with nine to twelve in the next service, but I'll just mention service must be done with the end of time in mind. Just serve God with an understanding that one day time shall stand still and be no more when all shall end one day eternity shall start for it's for it is one day one day time time shall stand still be no more service must be done faithfully, 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 faithfully. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. We'll look at that in the next service. It must be done faithfully, faithfully. There are people who are powerful but they are not faithful. I'll talk about that later. Faithfully. Eleven, service must be done obediently based on what God spoke to you, based on what he told you, based on what you know you should be doing with, with God and for God. And finally, service must be done from the place of intimacy with God. Your walking with God is superior to your walking for God. We'll talk about that in the last service. What have we said so far? Service must be done heartily, lovingly. Service must be done willingly. Service must be done joyfully. Must be done fervently and passionately. Must be done in sincerity and truth. Must be done in humility. Must be done in uprightness and godly fear. Must be devoid of eye service and men pleasing. Must be done with the end of time in mind must be done faithfully must be done obediently must be done from the place of intimacy what is the profit of service we'll look at that next Sunday but it says you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water the blessing of God is the privilege of committed servants of God. Is the privilege. Is the privilege. You don't 
beg him to bless you if he doesn't beg you to serve him. And I said there are three branches of this blessing when we serve. Number one is the guarantee of divine goodwill where God says, I am happy with you. I am pleased with you. I'm all right with you. You know, when God is happy with you, anybody's unhappiness with you is a waste of unhappiness. It's a waste of emotion. The guarantee of divine goodwill. Number two is the guarantee of divine supplies. It shall bless your bread and your water. He will give you bread and he will give you water. There are people who can give you bread but they can't give you water. You remember the, 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 the widow of Zarephath? Elijah said, give me water. He said, yes, sir. He said, join bread to it. He said, uh-uh. <laughs> and I give you water but they may not give you bread but God will give you both bread and water I heard a funny story of a young man who was told in the village to go and buy me use this five naira to buy a razor blade and he told the person who sent him five naira is not enough to buy both laser and blood you can buy laser but not blood But God can give you both the razor and the bread. <laughs> he can give you both the water and the bread. And finally, it is the frustration of earthly curses. As the light is the answer to the darkness, the blessing is the answer to the curse. It's a new day for somebody. Stand up on your feet everywhere you are.